Hello, SGTQ. My name is Sal, and I'll be your tour today through Ruby Grim Eclipse Yang Any Percent. So, one thing I want to go over real quick before we start the run is you'll notice that I only have one level selected while all my characters are maxed out. The reason for that is uh, just to show that for this game, when you beat a enemy that's the last enemy of that level you're able to leave the level and load into the next one for some reason the game is made so that when you beat the last enemy the next level unlocks so getting into the run of course i'm going to be selecting yang because this is yang any percent and the way that we move around is called be hopping as with many other games uh the way we do that is we jump dash attack and cancel it out you'll see that i'm doing uh, my heavy attack which is on triangle right here it's just a quick clip right out of bounds uh, with a move called aftershock aftershock uh, is one of yang's two ultimates the other one is super quick you'll see that later down the run but what aftershock is is it is a aoe attack that summons pillars and those pillars can either clip you or other characters out of bounds with uh, other characters it's a little bit easier with yang you need to have at least two ultimates one to actually summon the pillar and then the second one to actually clip you out of bounds Right here, uh, we spawn the control center because we skip the uh, loading area to spawn it. Right here, I'm just waiting for the creeps to spawn. You'll notice that I'm just doing uh, two light attacks and a heavy attack and then quickly canceling it out. The reason for that is just to save a little bit of uh, frames. I tried to do an ultimate to take out those two creeps, but unfortunately that one creep went down underground. Next are going to be these Beowulves. You're going to see that I'm going to damage myself on purpose. That's because Yang has an ability to uh, restore all of her ultimate when her ore is depleted. And you'll see that I just, I, I tried to take out those creeps with that ultimate, but uh, Aftershock doesn't have as big as an area as super quick does so that's a little but so with all these other Beowulves I just do same thing gather them all up and then use my ultimate to take them out for some reason this uh, alpha creep it's a stronger version of just a normal creep and it looks a little bit different uh, for some reason, it takes a while to spawn, so I'm going to do three light attacks and then a heavy. I forget what that uh, attack is called, but I just wait for that. And then the last wave is just going to be uh, three groups of normal Beowulfs and then followed by one Alpha Beowulf. Right there, I damage myself again on purpose. And then I just wait for all the Beowulfs to spawn together and use my ultimate to take them out. That one didn't die, so I just used two quick heavies. And then like with the alpha creep, um, I do that attack. Uh, the alpha Beowulf was a little high up for me to actually take him out, so I do that. Uh, and you'll notice I left early and uh, came back in, and the next level was unlocked. Right here is uh, another out of bounds skip. It's pretty easy, kind of. It's a little finicky sometimes. Then we come over here. You want, I want to be careful not to fall off the edge or else uh, I'd have to leave the level and then come back in. Uh, I tried to be hop off the ledge, but I messed up my inputs. So I just had to uh, just do two neutral hits and j just dash off. Then I'm going to uh, be hop all the way over to the end, near the end of the level. At least I want the section of the end. And this uh, part is a little bit finicky. Right here I'm lining myself up because uh, it's pretty precise actually. And with that we're in the last area. Once again the control center is not spawned. So we're just going to go back a little bit and spawn it. And this is actually going to be the last control center that we're going to have to deal with. 
So that's good. The first two levels of the game are a little tedious, uh, protect the control center. So luckily, this is the last one where we had to protect the control center. And then we just had to do our best to be hop. This is the other form of be hopping that I was talking about earlier, where this is the one that's in combat. Because the reason for this is because that uh, the other one, uh, the other form of be hopping, uh, it takes too long for me to, or it takes too long for Yang to recover uh, onto the ground. And so I just uh, be hop that way. Once again, I just have to wait for the Beowulfs to gather all together before I do an Aftershock. And then with these two, I just do those combos. So, uh, with these enemies, I I do this somewhat similar combo uh, with uh, the Alpha Creeps. Uh, but instead of doing the same combo again, I just do a... Uh, standing charged heavy. The reason for that is most of the time uh, when you do that combo it's so that they just do a charge at you. They have another way to attack you which is to back up and uh, roll towards you which is uh, a little bit longer to do and a little bit more time consuming. So right here um, as soon as I beat the last enemy I don't leave the level the reason for this is because this is a uh, checkpoint skip. When we move all the way back over here, uh, for some reason, the level is going to place us um, somewhere further ahead. There is a checkpoint skip from chapter 1 to chapter 2. However, we won't be able to do uh, the checkpoint skip from 2 to 3 if we were to do the checkpoint skip from 1 to 2. And this checkpoint skip saves quite a bit of time uh, compared to uh, just playing out chapter 3. The reason for that is because it spawns us right to the very end of this level of chapter 3, that is. You're also going to notice that I'm going to refund my skill points because I'm not going to have to use uh, Aftershock uh, for a while. You'll notice that I tried to uh, open up my menu during the cutscene, but that didn't really work out too well. I almost uh, uh, chose Aftershock, which would have been really bad, because it's going to make these next couple of levels easier to do with Super Quake. You're going to see right here that I'm not going to wait as long as I would uh, if I were to have Aftershock, because... As I said before, Super Quick has a much bigger area of effect. So right here, this is an Ursa. Uh, you'll notice that it it takes a lot of damage, and I just essentially just use the same combo as I do on a Alpha Creep because that's the best way to damage it. This is the one and only time we see a Alpha Ursa. Uh, they have uh, quite a bit of health and defense, so. The only time we can really damage it is when it stuns itself. You're going to see that I'm going to be luring the Alpha Ursa into this corner. That's to set up another checkpoint uh, skip. This checkpoint skip is really difficult as well. You're going to notice that I'm not going to want to take out the Ursa right away. I want to get it to a very low amount of health because this checkpoint skip is very difficult to do. So you see that I'm going to be moving back here and I've just barely got the uh, checkpoint skip. Doing that checkpoint skip saves a lot of time as well. If we didn't get it, we do have a backup strat. It doesn't save as much time, but it still saves quite a bit of time. Right here I'm just uh, loading. Uh, the crystal uh, or going towards the bomb to load the crystal 
And that was just the game not reading my input of loading the dust crystal into the uh, bomb. By the way, this is a bomb. And I put that dust cr crystal in right away uh, to spawn the next cr dust crystal right away. Uh, in this section, there are three spawn locations. There's th that one down there, uh, one near the gate that uh, we're passing, and then one at the very end by the second gate. So the next dust location is going to, uh, or dust crystal location is either going to be by that far gate or back by the gate that we just went past. So it spawns all the way over here. So that guarantees you or guarantees us that the next spawn location is going to be by the uh, first gate because uh, the way that this area works is that uh, the dust crystal spawns at least one. Uh, at, at least in one spot in uh, every area. And this is essentially just an odd scroller, so there isn't really much to talk about on this one. This next area, there's four different dust crystal spots, but we're only going to uh, use two dust crystal spots. Uh, however, those spots are random on where the dust wants to spawn. And there's just a lot of enemies, so we don't really do much. We can defeat them if we want to, or just let them do whatever. So when we uh, pick up the next dust crystal, we're not going to put it in right away. We're actually going to wait a little bit before we put it in uh, the cart. The reason for this is, uh, if we wait a little bit, then uh, the next dust crystal is going to spawn at the last area. And it's actually a lot quicker to have it spawn over here than try to go back and put it uh, in the cart from one of the previous locations. So, uh, so right here, I'm getting ready to uh, leave the level because as soon as the cutscene starts, uh, we're able to leave the chapter. When the cutscene is happening, we're not able to open the menu or anything, so that's why we get the menu ready there. Next, we have to find a key. Keys are difficult for us, so uh, we just like to climb up this tree and just go right over uh, the gate door thing. And uh, I'm doing this form of bunny hopping instead of the other way because um, it takes longer. Next we have uh, this fight. There are two different ways that this fight can go. Uh, one is that there'd be this Ursa and uh, four Beowulfs and then another Ursa. Another one is uh, just two waves of four Beowulfs. And that once uh, the two waves of four Beowulfs is a little bit faster compared to uh, the one Ursa and four Beowulfs and then one other Ursa. So this tree fight is uh, pretty RNG heavy. There's at least six or seven different um, waves that can happen. I believe the best one that uh, can happen is um, a few waves of Beowulfs and then one Alpha Beowulf. However, uh, I wasn't so lucky this time around, unfortunately. Otherwise, the Alpha Beowulf would have spawned already. And, yeah, sometimes it takes a while for uh, the next enemy to spawn. When a Beowulf spawns, it's uh, usually going to be in the group of four. So taking out that alpha creep uh, brings us to the next area. There's going to be a nice little skip that's going to be coming up. Uh, right here is just me messing up uh, uh, the B-hops because it is pretty difficult uh, to do. So right here I accidentally went a little too far. I sent up the skip but it doesn't uh, really matter too much. Uh, this skip is a little bit difficult as well. 
uh, there isn't much room to work on uh, these ledges because they're they are actually invisible barriers, as you see. So right here is a very difficult skip. Um, it's really weird how it works. I'm not entirely sure uh, how it works. Usually you just like hold the stick to the left when you're going over that area. However, uh, for some reason it just uh, pushed me out of that. So I have to fight this wave, unfortunately. So these waves are um, different. Uh, it can spawn a whole bunch of different things. Uh, this, this one was pretty good. It only spawned two waves of four bay wolves and then one alpha bay wolf. So that one's pretty good. Next, we uh, climb up this very steep hill. Careful, guys. You wouldn't want to trip and forever fall. Eh? <laughs> so right here, we have five waves that we need to defeat. Uh, the first uh, wave is... Uh, usually just four Beowulfs, or two sets of four Beowulfs. Uh, after that, uh, it's pretty random what it's going to be. Usually after four Beowulfs, if there's one left, it's usually going to be a Alpha Beowulf. So this one, we got four Beowulfs and an Ursa. So after this Ursa, there's going to be another one. There's, yeah, there's going to be another Ursa that spawns. So right there, I accidentally um, did my heavy too early after a dodge roll. If that happens, then you'll do an attack, which you don't want to do. So these waves are actually pretty decent. Um, getting these creeps uh, during any of the other waves is pretty bad. Uh, since creeps do take a long time to spawn for some reason. And ending it off with four bay wolves is nice. There are some waves where it's just all uh, creeps, which is very bad. It's not fun. And right there, we uh, face a very tough uh, Grim, a mutated Beowulf. I'm kidding, it's actually just a death abuse. Uh, so we could do a checkpoint skip for the next chapter. So right here, I'm get damaging myself on purpose to uh, get my ultimate back, of course. So as you see, I'm going back the way I came. I'm just going to drop off to the side because why not and pick up this artifact. And right here, I'm opening up the menu. Uh, that's just a simple audio or just showing you that there's just a simple audio bug just for fun. I'm only going to be doing it for chapter six because chapter six is really short. Uh, right here, it just spawns us at the very end of the level. And as you hear, the audio is muffled. And I believe that's also the last death abuse that we're going to be doing. Or only death abuse. In inbounds, there's a lot of more uh, death abuses. So right there, I tried to see if I had any ultimate left, or if I could get any ultimate. I I forgot uh, when exactly that happened, so I just had to wait a little bit longer, and then I was able to get my ultimate back. And then this wave was uh, pretty good, other than me forgetting uh, about uh, when I uh, damaged and abused for getting ultimate back. 
So this wave, it's going to be this Ursa, and then it's going to be one mutated Beowulf. Uh, the mutated Beowulfs are actually a bit easier to uh, fight compared to the Beowulf, or uh, the Ursa, my bad. And then right here, it's going to be two mutated creeps, and then two mutated, be mutated Beowulfs. Sometimes it's not always uh, that easy. So right here, I'm just doing a charge heavy because I know that I don't have a, I didn't have enough time for uh, my ultimate to recharge. Right here, I'm going to uh, damage abuse because more than enough time has passed. And then just like with all the other levels, I leave and re-enter early. And here I'm going to refund my uh, points again because there is a clip that will take us uh, to the end of the level, like with uh, most clips that is done here. Right here I'm being very careful uh, because it is actually incredibly easy to get pushed back inbounds without you noticing as well. So right here... Um, I'm still being very cautious because I'm still on the edge of getting back inbound, so I'm just being careful about that. And I could also possibly get caught. So right here is just a very long section of just uh, bee hopping, so there isn't really much going on. This level, once you're out of bounds, it's just a large flat land for some reason. A lot of the textures are just fake textures, so you could just go right through them. And right here, I'm uh, doing uh, that move to get back over here. And I'm landing on this pipe because I need to like, get over that wall. That that wall is actually uh, deceivingly high for its um, hitbox. And then right here, I'm just waiting for dialogue to get over. Uh, right here, we're learning about Merlot and how his island is his... And he's experimenting on Grim to make the most dangerous Grim. So with uh, this is actually the best RNG possible uh, for when it comes to uh, waves in this level, having those uh, six um, Grim. It's it, it's always going to be four Beowulfs and two Alphas. Uh, this one is actually going to be the worst RNG. Uh, as you see, that's the other move. Uh, I believe they're called Tuscans. I don't remember, to be honest. That's the move that we want them to do. And then it's just a whole bunch of creeps and then uh, two alpha creeps at the end. So it's just a lot of time that's wasted. Creeps are always just spread out so far apart, and they can also go underground, which is just really annoying when it comes to speedrunning this category, or this game in general. So right here we got another good wave of the uh, six Beowulfs and two Alpha creeps. And then we get another, uh, this is a, the last wave that we have to deal with, and this is a really good one. I tried to uh, use my ultimate so I could blow up the barrel and take out that uh, creep, but that didn't really work out too well. So I had to waste a little bit of time uh, taking them out. And then there's a lot of dialogue that happens right over here, so... Um, I don't worry about getting over here too quickly. The walls are actually pretty high on those for some reason. Not 100% sure why. But I'm just waiting in this little area right here. Because I, I don't want to go too far uh, before they're done talking. Or else I won't be able to get the checkpoint skip. I just had to get past that uh, golden crate. 
most of the time it's just uh, by that wall that most uh, runners do. And you'll see that I opened up my uh, abilities again because I lied. I'm a filthy liar. I'm actually doing the audio bug again. But luckily it's just at the end of this level so I don't need to worry about that. Also I lied again because I have to uh, put back on super quick. Because going through the uh, this fight or th through these waves are extremely annoying because uh, if you don't have a uh, super quick on, then uh, it's it's a uh, GG no re, I'd say. And then right here, this is like the one time where only two enemies are going to spawn after, or only two enemies are going to spawn for a wave. It's pretty rare, but for some reason, uh, the rules ac accepted for, uh, for those androids. And I didn't have any ultimate, so you saw that I did my range attack. Uh, that's because uh, one of Yang's abilities, um, one of her upgraded ranged abilities is, is that to uh, stun enemies. And you'll notice that... Um, I did two ultimates just to take out those uh, androids. And the white androids are actually the scariest androids because they can snipe you out of nowhere. Their grenades can snipe you out of nowhere. If you attack it or do an ultimate, then that's pretty much a done deal. So I, I do my best to take care of those androids first because they can uh, deal the most amount of trouble in chapter 9 you'll see that um, I got uh, I got those two androids and mutated Beowulf and I uh, tried to deal with those androids as quick as possible you'll notice that I did a range attack right on uh, the uh, door uh, seemingly for no reason, but for some reason Yang's uh, gauntlets can just go right through that and able to break open that uh, little gate. And we just had to wait for dialogue to get over, uh, get some Beowulfs to spawn. And then ha having to wait for the next set of enemies to spawn. So those two androids spawned, so I tried to deal with them as quickly as possible. But um, in doing that, I didn't have enough ultimate to um, take out these vats the fast way. So I had to waste a little bit of time on that. Usually you could just use two ultimates and take out those vats, and it's pretty easy. So right there, I just uh, damage uh, abused to get my ultimate back. And then after that, um, after defeating the remaining Grim, uh, there's going to be a small little wave that happened you'll see that I saw that there's a, a trail line for a grenade and I did not want to have to deal with that at all those grenades are probably the scariest thing in this entire game not a hundred percent sure why but they can just knock you out unbelievably quick quick So right here, this is the second to last area. Um, you'll notice that I dealt with those androids pretty quickly because I do not want to deal with them like at all. And then I'm uh, just doing the standard kind of combo with uh, the mutated Beowulf. 
And then right here, I'm just uh, going for a small little skip. This actually is a pretty dangerous skip for saving almost no time at all. Because if uh, if you dash the wrong way, then um, then you can get infinite loop in the steam. So we are, we're uploading something to Merlot system, and you'll notice that our uh, progress bar doesn't really move except for when we defeat Grim. So uh, every time we defeat Grim or an android, uh, whatever Merlot throws at us, uh, once we defeat it, that advances the progress bar. So this is actually a pretty scary situation. I tried to get my ultimate back so I could deal with the androids. Um, however, it, it's not really very fun because androids can, like I said before, they can take you out relatively quickly. So anytime trying to damage uh, uh, damage abuse or, or whatever off of them is not a, not a fun time at all. So right here, I didn't realize that there was uh, two androids around, so I tried to damage abuse, and I couldn't get uh, that stun in time for the Ursa. Uh, between uh, the Ursa and the android getting stunned, um, I went for the android because those are way more threatening. Right here, I tried to go for a. Uh, I tried to go for uh, an ultimate kill on the Ursa, but that didn't really go too well. So right here, uh, on chapter ten, uh, this begin part is random on what you can do. That's actually the best RNG that can happen, is getting those two androids. However, with those two androids, that does come at a cost, though, because we don't have any ultimate. And, of course, I'm trying to uh, take care of uh, the androids. And right there, you'll notice that um, I got my ultimate back, so I took care of those power nodes. There are a lot of things that happen in this area, which is difficult to keep track of. But once the power nodes are gone and the enemies are gone, it, it's pretty easy peasy, I'd say. There's a, there's also a out of balance skip that uh, we could do at the beginning of the level. However, that's extremely difficult and not really worth it. Uh, and there's also a skip after uh, the section. However, I don't do that because that technically doesn't consider you beating the game. So what I do instead is towards the end, uh, I'm going to do a death abuse. I'll explain more when that comes over, but uh, super quick uh, range is pretty broken. Honestly, if we were to do that with Aftershock, we wouldn't be able to hit any of them. Or if anything, we'd probably only be able to hit two. So you see that I'm trying to get get my finisher for my ultimate out, or for my wrench tag out, because uh, I want to stun the androids, because when I saw those Beowulfs, um, it's guaranteed that you're going to get two androids. What kind of androids? Not 100% sure. So this is the last section of the run. There's a whole bunch of different ways that this last fight can go. Fantastic work. I must admit you really handled this well. The team back at Beacon is cheering for you. Sometimes Merlot uh, likes to send out the same enemy over and over again, or the same wave over and over again. 
Other times, uh, he sends uh, different waves every single time. Like before, this uh, this is actually probably one of the scariest waves because you could have a white android launch a grenade and then have a mutated creep come out of nowhere and uh, blow up and then that grenade that the android launch will also blow up and uh, one hit KO you in an instant and there's nothing that you can do about that. Right there I just take out those androids pretty quickly. That, that was a pretty easy wave. Uh, however, we, we get uh, this painful uh, song and dance again of the white android and the uh, mutated beowulf. It's not very fun. You'll notice that there is a symbol right above uh, white androids. And I don't uh, do the team attack because in this uh, version of the game, uh, Yang's, uh, Yang's team attack does not do any damage, or at least very little damage, so it's not really worth it to do. And uh, this is uh, pretty similar to the first wave, but it is also the scariest. So I dealt with the mutated creeps first because those were the easiest to deal with. Just uh, one non-charged heavy can take them out. So right here I'm going to move all the way to where the uh, uh, mutated death stalker is. This is the final boss of the game. Uh, I'm going to be doing a death abuse here. Uh, because I want to get Aftershock so I can do a skip after I beat the uh, last uh, or after I beat the Mutate Death Stalker. So this is probably one of the worst fights ever in this game. The reason for that is there's just a lot of stuff that spawns and it's very difficult to keep track of everything that's going on. And those uh, arrows or whatever, uh, the Mutate Deathstalker uh, spawns out, uh, they can just one-shot uh, you for no reason. And uh, the Mutate Deathstalker can also kill uh, its own enemies as well for some reason. Not 100% sure why. And you'll notice that I'm trying to take care of uh, these, uh, android. I want to take care of that android because it, it is very annoying. Before, in an older patch of the game, we could easily take care of, uh, this fight because there would be time in between each, uh, android. But every time you beat an android in this patch of the game, it just uh, respawns like right away. And that time, uh, the uh, mutate dust stalker tried to uh, it tried to spawn enemies. However, they just spawned it right on top of my aftershock, so uh, they just died instantly. Right here, I'm trying to be careful uh, of what I'm doing because uh, there, there's quite a few enemies and the android Lancer, uh, he can have you in a loop and then the uh, white android can just snipe you with a grenade and you're instantly dead. Right here I'm not using my ultimate either because I want to have at least two uh, ultimates so I can clip through the door because as soon as the mutate death stalker is dead which is right here I can just uh, the level is considered done so I clip myself right out of here so I can uh, load the next uh, uh, scene 
And it also um, messes with the uh, dialogue as well, so it's really awkward and also really funny. So he's telling us to get into the escape pod while we're already in the escape pod, but uh, yeah. And then for some reason, out of nowhere, this section just gets obnoxiously loud for no given reason. That is just the loudest part of the game, and there's no given reason for that. And with uh, that, the credits start rolling, and that is getting any percent. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this run. Hopefully uh, they'll get in. But that's for you guys to decide. My name's Sal, and I will see you guys at SGDQ. Also, if there's anyone who wants uh, help with this game, speedrope.com. Um, we have our leaderboard there and, uh, we have all the patches. Our discord is in there as well for if there's anyone who needs help. We also have tutorials. Uh, we just have a whole bunch of stuff there. So if you guys need any help, you can go there. Okay. Bye this time.